This man right here is named Joseph Stalin. He is the former communist dictator of the Soviet Union. And in regards to what he thought about the topic of elections, well, he was once famously quoted as saying this, those who vote decide nothing. Those who count the votes decide everything. Now, there is some debate about whether that quote really came from Stalin or from somebody else within the Communist Party, but regardless, that appeared to be the general sentiment regarding elections within Communist Russia. And you know what? It appears that there are people in this country, meaning right here in America, who are taking that advice to heart, specifically by working overtime not to influence who people vote for, but rather how the underlying election system actually operates, by influencing who actually counts the votes. And of course, just like everything else in the year 2022, they are doing this under the banner of making the elections more fair, more democratic, and more equitable. Now, to be specific, I'm referring to a big money liberal operation, which is ready to spend about $80 million in order to determine how local elections throughout the entire country are run, which might sound like hyperbole, but it's not. In fact, let's go through it together. The organization is called Run for Something. It's a political action committee founded by one of the former directors of Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. And just as a fun fact, this group was actually created on January the 20th of 2017, the very day that President Trump was inaugurated into office. And on their website, this group is unabashedly progressive. Here's in fact how they describe what they do. Quote, We provide a safety net for new and exciting progressive leaders at all stages of their journey, helping them run efficient, strategic, grassroots driven campaigns while feeling supported throughout the process. And so essentially, Run for Something helps small, typically young progressive candidates run for local office. Their specialty is down ballot elections. So these are campaigns for things like state, city, county, municipal, and other local offices. Their aim is essentially to get progressive candidates elected into smaller offices across the entire country. And it appears that they have been rather busy, given the fact that on their website, they claim that since the year 2017, they have recruited nearly 100,000 people across all 50 states to run for state or local offices. However, it looks like this organization is getting a little bit, you can say, creative about how exactly they are going to help these candidates. That's because exactly three months ago today, Run for Something launched a new $80 million initiative in order to help elect thousands of local election clerks, election supervisors, registrars, recorders, as well as other local officials that are charged with running local elections. Essentially, with their new initiative, which just for your reference, they called the Clerk Work Initiative, they moved their focus further down the chain, from the candidates on the ballots to instead the individuals who are charged with distributing, collecting, administering, and counting the ballots. And in terms of their justification for doing this, well, Ms. Amanda Littman, who is the former Hillary Clinton campaign staffer, and she's the founder of this whole organization, she said that if they don't do it, well, people like Steve Bannon might just move in. Here's specifically what she told the Washington Post, quote, you can influence quite literally who is administering elections. If we don't do it, we are absolutely going to regret it. Now, there is some truth to what she said. Steve Bannon did say back in December of last year that there is a volunteer movement of conservatives looking to get involved in elections. Here's specifically what Steve Bannon said back in December on the subject, quote, we are going to take over the election apparatus. American citizens that are volunteering, they are going to volunteer to become a precinct committeeman. They are going to volunteer to become an election official. They are going to come and run for county clerk and overthrow those incumbent county clerks. And so, using Steve Bannon's comments as their impetus, Run for Something sent out a message via Twitter a few months before formally launching their initiative. Here's specifically what that message said. Quote, Steve Bannon is recruiting people to run for local election administration. So are we. But you know, for democracy. If you want to run for a position like city or county clerk or any other local position, we want to help. And then they list their website. And so, as you can see in their initial message, they just wanted to help local citizens get involved in their elections. However, that has now morphed into something much larger. And it's worth noting that helping local citizens get involved in elections is a significantly different matter than an $80 million project to, as the Daily Signal puts it, quote, place party activists in election supervisory posts. Now, in case you're not aware, local election clerks, as well as local election supervisors, they are generally the people within a given municipality who are empowered to both interpret as well as to enforce the election regulations of their given state. And oftentimes, these election clerks are given broad discretion on matters like whether or not to count absentee ballots that come in after election day, how strictly their municipalities enforce things like voter ID or signature matching requirements, and they generally get to decide how closely poll watchers are allowed to monitor ballot counting on election day. 
Now, even though the clerk work project was just established a few months ago, the politicization of election officials has actually been a growing controversy for many years. Now, of course, everyone remembers the cardboard boxes that were placed over top of windows during the 2020 election cycle, but let me give you a few other recent examples. Last month, over in Philadelphia, a former Democrat congressman named Michael Myers, he pled guilty in federal court to bribing the city's election officials in order for them to stuff ballot boxes in their local races. Then, back in 2018, a Florida judge ruled that the supervisor of elections for Broward County, she had violated the law when she destroyed ballots from a Democrat congressional primary. And frankly, it's not only in recent years. In fact, a decade ago, in 2012, a Democrat official who was the county clerk in Lincoln County, West Virginia, he pled guilty to stuffing ballot boxes as well as falsifying absentee ballots. And frankly, this is not even a partisan issue. For instance, also back in the year 2012, a Republican county clerk in Waukesha County, Wisconsin, she agreed to step down from her post after she said that a quote-unquote human error led to the late discovery of 14,000 uncounted votes in a highly contested election. However, moving forward, according to Mr. Hans von Spakovsky, who is a former member of the Federal Election Commission, he says that having a nationwide project, which is quite literally dumping $80 million to elect partisan election supervisors, is a real threat to the independence of the entire system. Here's specifically what he told the Daily Signal, quote, it is a very dangerous development for local election officials who are supposed to be objective and nonpartisan. This group is trying to elect political consultants and political activists to these positions with the potential for meddling with the election results and further undermining confidence in elections. Now, if this tactic seems a little bit familiar to you, that might be because what the clerks project is trying to do in regards to election clerks resembles quite closely what George Soros did with district attorneys. Specifically, George Soros funded the Justice and Public Safety Super PAC, which then gave large donations to the campaigns of liberal DAs across the entire country. And the reason that George Soros decided to target district attorneys, well, here's how Matt Palumbo, who wrote a book about George Soros, here's how he des described it to me in an interview just uh, about a month ago. Well, the easiest way to get policy reform done, because if you want, let's say, less bail, more lenient sentencing, you want these crimes prosecuted and these not, I mean, to do that through legislation is quite a process. You have to do everything individually. Um, you're going to get a lot of opposition. If you elect a DA, they have total autonomy on all those things. So it's just, hey, I want the law changed. I back a guy who wants to change it exactly the way I do. He goes in, he changes it overnight. And so you see, it appears that just like George Soros, who bypassed lawmakers and put into power the enforcers of the law, this liberal organization, Run for Something, is bypassing the changing of election laws. They're bypassing Congress and all the different state legislatures. And instead, they are focusing on getting into power the people who are responsible for actually implementing the election laws. And in terms of where this money is actually coming from, well, we were not able to trace the entirety of the $80 million, but according to their website, some of the big donors include LinkedIn, Onward Together, which was founded by Hillary Clinton, Act Blue, which is a group devoted to electing Democrats nationwide. You have Alphabet, which is, of course, the parent company of Google. You have Apple. You have Mark Zuckerberg's initiative, among a list of many other donors. And now, before we move on, let me quickly show you this beautiful coin. This right here is an American Walking Liberty one ounce gold coin. And typically I order at least one of these from our sponsor, American Hartford Gold, every single month. The reason I do so is because, I mean, as you likely know, the inflation rate in this country is the highest that has been in, what, the last 40 years now? Everything like the price of food, the price of housing, the price of gas is absolutely going through the roof. And in fact, market experts like the CEO of JP Morgan Chase, he's not only predicting a recession, but he's even using words like unprecedented economic hurricane. And so listen, I absolutely do not give you any financial advice, but I would recommend that you do what I do, which is pick up the phone and call American Hartford Gold. Their super friendly staff can help you diversify your portfolio by either getting physical gold and physical silver delivered directly to your doorstep like I do, or deposited directly into your IRA and your 401k accounts they make the entire process super simple. And actually, besides me, they have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau with quite literally thousands of satisfied clients around the country. And best of all, to our viewers, to the viewers of Facts Matter, they are currently throwing in $2,500 worth of free silver on your first qualifying order. So giving them a call is an absolute no-brainer. So pick up the phone and call 866-242-2352. That's 866-242-2352. Or text ROMAN to 6 Five five three two. Their link will also be down in the description box below. And then let's head on back to the studio. If you'd like to read more about this clerk work project, as well as what type of impact it can have on your local area, well, I'll throw several links down into the description box below this video for you to check out.
And all I ask in return is that you take a super quick moment to vote with your finger and smash, smash, smash that like button so this video can be shared out to ever more people. And also, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel as well. That way you can get this type of honest news content delivered directly into your YouTube feed every single weekday. And now, lastly, I'd like to tell you about a super cool interview that I just published over on Epic TV about three days ago. Because you see, in the year 2020, while everybody on his NBA team was kneeling for the national anthem, well, there was one NBA player, Jonathan Isaac, who was the sole player on Orlando Magic to stand. And then likewise, in the year 2021, while everyone on his team complied with the COVID-19 vaccine requirement, the vaccine mandate that was pushed down upon them, Jonathan Isaac was the sole player, the only player to dissent and refuse to take the shot. And so I actually got a chance to speak with Jonathan and he explained to me his story, which in my opinion is an age old story of one man standing for his convictions against popular consensus. Here's a trailer for that interview. The article drops and it's called the NBA's anti-vaxxers are pushing around the league and they're winning. And uh, in that article, he detailed that I came to my vaccination status by watching Donald Trump press conferences and studying black history. Just a complete mischaracterization of, of my thoughts. It was for me coming to the realization that this thing, it wasn't just about a vaccine. It wasn't just about public health. It was politics. It was, it was political. It had an agenda behind it. People want tolerance for their views and their opinions, but they don't want to extend that tolerance to anybody else. And what happened with George Floyd and what happened with the vaccine, people decided on what the only option was to do, which was to take the vaccine and it was to kneel and they didn't give options for anything else. And if you chose another option, you were inherently evil. If you'd like to check out that interview in its glorious entirety, you can do so over on Epic TV, our awesome no censorship video platform. The link to that episode will be right there at the very top of the description box. I hope you click on it. I hope you check it out as well as the other great content that we publish on there because every single week I publish between two to three exclusive episodes over on Epic TV that due to reasons of censorship, you cannot find here on YouTube. Again, that link will be right there at the very top of the description box. I hope you check it out. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed, and most importantly, stay free.